elected back in 2021 has been spearheading efforts to get the country's economy back on track. I think we did our part as a country in terms of meeting our obligations. We did that well ahead of time. Now it is for the other part of the stick to, to, to come on board. The, the, the bilateral creditors, I think we're doing reasonably well, delayed, yes, it was delayed, but the private creditors, we now need to close and put this to bed so that it can create the headroom we needed, we anticipated long before. But these delays are beginning to negate the gains that we already made uh, as a country in our economic and social restructuring process. And I think it's an indictment not just on Zambia and other data countries, but also on the global institutional framework, institutional arrangements, such as one we are talking about, the G20. If this thing doesn't work, doesn't deliver on time, it's an indictment on the global system as well. So we have to make it work. It has to work. We are at the last stages. Let's get it done. And remember, Zambia is like a guinea pig now. When mm -hmm. Zambia's debt restructure is put to bed properly, it will motivate others to sign up to this process. It will also help to improve the global systems, the global frameworks, so that they can deliver on time and deliver effectively. That's uh, President Hichilema, who is speaking to me exclusively. Now, Southern Africa, including Zambia, has suffered from a drought which has been declared a national disaster. There have been periods where the country has gone without rain for five weeks at a time. As a result, Zambia has lost one million hectares of planted crops this rainy season alone. I asked the president about climate change and the juggle he faces between the international climate commitments of Zambia and the economic development of the country. Well, first and foremost, uh, uh, we're facing the worst drought in history. Records show that we're facing the worst drought in history. Six million people are under threat of food insecurity. This is a serious issue. We also ask for a global support mechanism to fall in place because this climate change, this drought, is largely instigated by the negative effects of climate change. And I think you know that the, the various climate change conferences we've had, we are talking about mitigation, you know, issues that have arisen now. Excessive heat. This is much. The heat is, is, is beyond three, almost four degrees above what is normal in the month of March in Zambia. And by the way, it's not just in Zambia. It's the whole of most of Southern Africa. So this is a situation clearly showing that we need to read up our efforts, travel our efforts to climate mitigate. Well, Zambia has a history of corruption, which has often been blamed for holding it back economically. In November last year, the U.S. ambassador to Zambia gave a scathing speech about corruption in the country, in which he said uh, he criticised Zambia's track record on compliance and accountability. I asked the president about this. Corruption is not tolerated by us, by our government, very clear from day zero, even before we formed government. So we're simply doing what we say to the people of Zambia, those who put us in office, that we will fight corruption. Corruption takes away resources from school children, takes away resources from the sick in terms of absence of medicine. So that's obvious. So we are fighting corruption, but we also know that corruption or corrupt people fight back. We know that. And they will create narratives sometimes when you're enforcing the rule of law, when you're basically protecting public asset, private asset, private property, public property is it where there will be a group of people who feed off corruption, who create different narratives. And therefore, we, we stand firm on this. We've actually, to demonstrate that, we've made legal changes, some amendments to our laws that now will allow us to prosecute corruption once someone is arrested, is charged within five months. That's Tremendous achievement. We've, we've created what we call an economic and financial crimes court, which will process corruption much, much quicker. But we're taking two approaches. One, to prosecute to jail as per the law. Two, to recover the assets. These are two important components that we're moving together. It's, it's a double-edged situation. An ordinary coin has two sides. Either people prosecuted and convicted or they're acquitted. That's fine by us. But the process must move quicker. Justice de delayed is justice denied. That's President uh, Hichilema, the Zambian president, talking to me uh, about the problems and issues facing.